two, and one. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 61 of Global Citizens. My name is Calvin. I am the show's host, and I'm also its creator. So, yes, my guest for today is actually now have accomplished another record in the show as she is the youngest in the show. So at the age of 21 years old, but she, she has accomplished so many things. So she is currently an award-winning filmmaker based in Los Angeles who majored in cinema and media studies at the University of Southern California. Her short films have been screened all at the All-American High School Film Festival, Berlin International Short Film Festival, Oniros Films Awards, and many more, which I do not want to carry on since if not, I will lose my broadcast time. <laughs> so along with that, of course, she is also a third culture kid who recently become a published author. She recently created a book called The Third Culture Teens, which, of which she, is, she will be discussing on the show today. And of course, she gave me a lesson to mute my microphone before I go live since she caught me uh, doing my usual routine of singing. Before you are great, though. You are, you are great at singing, though. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm a singer, though. Sorry. And with that, so without further ado, let me introduce my guest for today is Miss Lee Ji Wan, author of Third Culture Teen. So, hi, Ji Wan. How are you? Welcome to the hi. show. I am great. Nice to be here. Uh, pleasure's all ours. All right, uh, do you want, I will just pass the platform to you first. Maybe you can introduce yourself. Uh, so in this show, we have a term called the TC Quest. So basically, it tells you of your experience growing up as a third culture, as a third culture kid, where you grow up, etc. So yeah, I'll just pass the floor back to you first. Cool. Um, so my story is I was born in Korea and I was raised there till I was in first grade. And then I moved to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, where I had lived for, I think, I think like three, four years, three, four years. And then I moved to a small coastal city in China called Qingdao. And that was, I went there till middle school. And then I went back to Korea, um, lived in Seoul for four years, and then moved back to Qingdao in China where I graduated high school. And then I moved to LA in the United States for college. And I'm back here because of Corona. <laughs> okay, wow. Yeah, okay, lots of moving okay. around. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, no worries, no worries about that. I mean, that's why you're a third culture kid, right? That's <laughs> the experience growing up. And of course, that's part of it. Uh, okay, so for those of you who just tuned into the show for the very first time, yeah? Global Citizens is an online webcast that I hosted and I invited people who are like myself and G1. Uh, we are both the culture kids. So I've also invited expats, uh, global nomads, and even international speakers who need to spend considerable time abroad outside of their home. So the main purpose is to actually in educate the individuals who have never experienced this lifestyle. It's not all always also fancy also glamorous that you will see on social media there's difficulties there's challenges and of course there's a main difference because when you do visit a country as a tourist you are there yes you are exposed to a new culture however after a few days or weeks you are back to where you are from whereas if you are there to stay you have to adapt to your mindset you have to adjust how you think how your even your own values at times in order for you to actually ingratiate yourself into the new society and at times it creates a lot of identity crisis and in adulthood this 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 makes you question of where you are from and how you are so other than that i will continue with uh, i will continue with my show uh, so do you i'm so sorry for the very very first question it's the one thing that we TCK hit. What <laughs> is your definition of home? And also, <laughs> does it relate more to the people or the location itself? Um, that's actually a great question because I have a chapter in my book wholly dedicated to just what is home for third culture kids. And I've categorized them into different categories according to um, what people answered. And um, some people like to call home a single location. Some people have multiple locations at the same time. For some people, it's 
where a certain group of people is, like their family or their friends. And interestingly enough, um, I've also heard of someone who feels like they're at home whenever they're surrounded by strangers, when they're in a completely new place and they're surrounded by people they've never seen before. So all that was interesting. Um, for me, I would, I feel like it would have been more difficult to answer the question if I was still in the States right now, since my family was in China, I was in America, but our nationality is Korean. So it would have been a lot more complicated back then. But right now I am in Korea with the rest of my family in this city that we're living in right now. So I would say it's a lot easier to answer the question that my home for the moment would be Pohang in Korea, where I'm living. Okay, she revealed where her location is. Please don't go ah, into there. No, they would no, track me kidding. out. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, uh, South Korea actually has a, has a special meaning to me. Uh, so a cousin that I grew up with in Singapore and my aunt, and of course her husband, my uncle, my aunt whom I regard as a second mother is actually living in South Korea. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, when COVID actually hit, and at that time, South Korea was, I think, one of the one of the highest recipients. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I was really worried about that. However, it was difficult to contact them. So once I really get news of them, I'm quite happy to hear that. So other than that, I actually visited South Korea. Really lovely place, but <laughs> I don't like it during the winter. I grew up in a in countries with 42 degrees, and I hate cold. Yeah, it gets freezing fun. cold here. It's crazy. Yeah. I have one very funny story. So when I reached there, my older sister, who has been there for several days, actually asked me, uh, "How does your how does your face feel?" So I was wondering, "What do you mean by face? My face is okay." Uh, Try to go outside and tell me in a few minutes. So I went outside, and then my face looked like as if there's a gigantic salmon hitting my face. It was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I can't handle the. I can't handle the cold. But yeah, that was, that was my first experience with winter. And, oh yeah, that sounds rough. <laughs> yeah, and the next time I'm there, I will make sure to put on a face mask. Ironically, now we are doing it all the time. Hooray! Everybody does it now. <laughs> Okay, so we definitely we will definitely talk about your book later on. Uh, but for now, let's try to get to know you a little bit more. Yeah. So mm -hmm. earlier you mentioned on your experience is that you can say that you are at home now since you are back in South Korea. So I actually want to ask you is that uh, what is your experience though? Can you elaborate a little bit more on your experience repatriating because? Mm -hmm. Uh, from Seoul, now you are staying in Pohang because from what I know, Seoul is a metropolitan city and yeah. Pohang is a little bit more of a coastal town, right? It's a little mm -hmm. bit more on the rural it's side. Rural, so, yeah. yeah. So from your life uh, in a city from KL, which is also a big city. So can you tell us a little bit more on your experience repatriating back on the cultural differences actually? Mm -hmm. Um, so I feel like the actual repatriation happened back in middle school when I had lived abroad in both Malaysia and China for like seven years. And then I had to move back to Korea for middle school. That was a very, very difficult time for me, especially because um, in the previous school that I went to in China, I had a group of kids bully me in middle school and those kids were specifically Korean. So, and when, so when I heard from my mom that we're going back to Korea, I was terrified because I haven't been there in so long and it's just going to be full of people who are different from me and just like the kids who bullied me at school. So it was, it was a terrible experience. Even at the airport, I was like, please just leave me here. Like I'll get by somehow. I was like 13, <laughs> but uh, we moved back. I was not left at the airport. Um, and we moved to Seoul where I went to middle school and it was also extra difficult because my mom had sent me to not a public school but a private school that was like very strict and Korean education system compared to American international schools is already strict enough so they had like dress codes and we had like hair codes like it was crazy so it made it extra difficult to really adjust to my life there um, but I feel like having my family around definitely helped me I feel like um, making friends who also lived abroad, who are also expats also helped me. 
And looking back, like I feel like at the moment it was very difficult and I hated being there. But looking back, I, ha I have friends from middle school that I still am in touch with now and friends from high school in Korea who I'm still in touch with as well. And I feel like if I hadn't spent those years in Korea, I would have never ever felt like a Korean. But because of those um, three years that I spent here, I feel like there's like that fundamental part of me that I always know would be my Korean identity. And I know people struggle with that a lot. A lot of the other TCKs who haven't spent a lot of time in their passport country um, feel very insecure about that, which they shouldn't. But I feel like it was, it's a lot more comfortable for me to say that I'm Korean and I'm from Korea because I have spent those, I guess, developmental middle school years in Korea where I made lots of friends and lots of good memories. So that was my repatriation process in middle school. Right now, um, yeah, Puang is very different from Seoul. But I'm just very used to going to new places and meeting new people. So I'm just taking it all as an adventure. It's been very fun. <laughs> all right. OK, if any of those dear friends that she mentioned is watching this, please leave a comment or please leave a like. That way we know who you are so that we can give you a shout out. Uh, <laughs> OK, uh, yeah, so. Okay, this is something that actually is asked by one of my viewers who is actually in South Korea at the moment. Oh. Yeah, Hello. this is actually, uh, it's actually a question from her. And mm -hmm. I actually will ask you this, yeah? yeah. So what, the, this is a two-parter. Sorry, my camera is here. Two-parter. <laughs> yes. So first off is what do you feel has been the ultimate blessing as a TCK? And the second part is that uh, what do you feel has been, at the same time, in her words, in her words, yeah, not mine, mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. curse, being a TCP. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you need the positive and the negative. So, yeah, do you want? Mm, I would say the curse and the blessing is actually one thing. Because um, when I explain to people how I interact with the cultures within me, I feel like I never have 100% of everything I encompass. Like, I never feel like I 100% understand Korean culture. I don't understand 100% of Chinese culture, Malaysian culture, American culture. I always have this weird 20%, 30%. So when I first talk to people, I, I kind of have something to talk about at first. Like when I meet someone from China for the first time, we have something to talk about for like the first five minutes. And then I run out of things to say because I don't know the rest 70%. I'm not an authentic, real Chinese person. Start so, asking them for Sorry? <laughs> you can start asking them Niatsu Sumoma. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> yeah, yeah I can say that. that. <laughs> Nothing real. <laughs> I mean, we can talk about food, we can talk about like language sometimes, but like beyond that, I run out of things to say. So um that's the curse. Like I can never even if I'm Korean, like I can never 100% connect with someone from Korea who has lived there, lived here their whole life. So that's the curse. But at the same time, I feel like that makes it more easier for me to connect with more various groups of people. I'm more open to people who are different from me. And I'm also more open to exploring new places, exploring new food. And because the world is such an exciting place, um, I feel like you missed out on so much of it and you miss out on really seeing the good in people. When you go beyond the differences, you kind of connect with people on a human level. And I feel like you really miss that opportunity if you're not as open to new things and new people. So only knowing that 30% of everything, of every culture, that would be the curse, but also the blessing because it lets me open up for to fill up my 100% with more different things. Okay, okay. Wow, that's a, that's a really good description, yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually have issue with repatriation when I return back to Indonesia because, mm -hmm. well, uh, growing up in Singapore, a highly developed country on its own, and then you are back to Indonesia, a still developing country with an incredibly different cultural issues of its own. So it was not an easy process. In fact, mm -hmm. one of the main intention of global citizens is actually for people to actually see mm -hmm. what difficulties these people have when coming back home because when you hear, oh, you are from this country or you're from that country, then everybody would assume it's already the more glamorous aspect of it. Like, for example, mm -hmm. I really hate it when people, when I tell people I'm from Indonesia and then you tell me, hey, I went to Bali and my answer is go screw yourself. 
because it it's not the exact same thing. Bali is right, built right. by the community. It's not mm. the representative of the entire Indonesia itself. It's not the experience. No, I get. not at all. Yeah. So yeah, uh, just a uh, heads up. I, you guys do know I use a lot of vulgarities here. So <laughs> by all means, if you need to. Okay, moving <laughs> on. Okay, uh, yeah, with regards to what I mentioned, like some of the questions, it's like some of the statement that if you have never experienced this lifestyle, what is it like for you? Maybe I can ask you also, uh, what kind of questions actually could argue as a TCK that maybe is, maybe because a lot of those who grow up in one country, they only experience one culture. Well, they are, it's not that they are intentionally be, but mm -hmm. they be insensitive because they do not know what is it that is going on with your lifestyle, what is it right. going on with your mind. So what kind of question do you feel could be insensitive to TCKs? Mm. I don't know if I've ever been really offended by it, but whenever I say, especially back when my family was in China and I have lived there for like five years, graduated high school there. And so I always explain to people that I'm from China because I literally came from China. I traveled on the plane and went to America. I came from China. But whenever I say that, people, some people would be offended by it. Like, oh no, but you don't look Chinese. Like you don't speak Chinese. So explaining that has always been difficult. And I feel like more TCK stories have to be told to kind of normalize that, that experience of being from somewhere, but not necessarily having it as a passport country. Um, so that's been difficult, but I feel like questions or statements that in annoys me more are more stereotypes or prejudices about certain yes. groups of people. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's very annoying, especially <laughs> when you're like, oh, I'm from Korea. It's like, oh, like you, you like you must listen to K-pop all the time. Like, oh, I'm from China. Like, oh, you must like your dumplings. Like, no, we don't. It's a big group of people. <laughs> we all have different experiences, especially as a Kung Fu. We all don't know Kung Fu. <laughs> Like, especially as a TCK, when you're not 100% part of that culture and you act different from the way that people stereotypes your community, and yeah. they're, then they're surprised by that and they're confused and offended by that. That annoys me to have my identity assumed by other people when that is obviously not who I am. Yeah, I think that's what TCKs have to deal with a lot because they're always beyond other people's expectations. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of the upcoming question will focus on all of these areas. Okay. Uh, Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. So as earlier you mentioned, you are stuck in Pohang at the moment. It's mm -hmm. because of you can't travel, right? Because of the recent pandemic. Yes. Uh, in the recent case, there has been a lot of racial these issues that well we didn't expect would be would be given a platform to mm. be open up it's like an opening a pandora's box yeah uh, due to this pandemic so uh one of the things like for example is the recent xenophobia case and even though it is actually an entirely separate thing the recent murder of george floyd and mm. i've actually covered I've actually covered that particular area twice on this show. Oh. Yeah, it was an incredibly difficult moment, even for myself, even though mm. it, well, in terms of skin color, maybe I can't say that it affected me directly. But at the same time, it is also something that while it's different, it's at the same time, it's rooted from the same kind of issue. Right. So what do you think, though, if more awareness of TCK knowledge and experience that people are actually much more aware of could help to tackle or dwindle on this kind of global issues that mm. I think it was it was the older mindset we can't really change it anymore but what can you feel can be done moving forward mm. by your experience as a TCK and etc. Hmm. I feel like it's I have a line in my book where I say, if we, we, we're we always so connected in our modern age, we always know about news or issues from different places, yet I feel like it's so much more difficult for people to actually sympathize 
show love and genuinely care for other people as you know contrast to the information they absorb and the information they take in and um you talked about how the coronavirus kind of opened up the pandora's box it was especially difficult for, for me because i was directly involved with every moment of the global um corona pandemic experience because when i was in america that's when it first started in china where my family was so my family was going through a lot and it was a very difficult time for me as well because i was super concerned for them um they basically just had to leave everything behind and move to korea um, but in that process, I know that there was a lot of um, news and media in Korea that really put China under a very negative light, which was very difficult for me to take in because I guess my family is leaving China behind for safety in Korea. But at the same time, I feel very attached to China and I consider China my, my home. But at the same time, my passport country, Korea, has like the general public that has a very negative and racist viewpoint of China. So all that was going on. And um, meanwhile, I think Corona just kind of started happening in America at that point. And I remember um, a lot of kids like saying comments like, oh, like I'm never gonna make it to my frat party tonight. Like, why is this happening? Like, we don't want like our lockdowns. Like hearing that in addition to all that suffering that I know my family is going through was very difficult for me. It, it kind of, I kind of hit like a low point of my view on human race that night. <laughs> I was like, I'm going through so much and my family is going through so much. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people all across the world are going through so much difficulty at the same time. Yet, like somebody next to me out here is just happy. Like they don't care enough to say that like they should go to their frat party tonight. Like they know about the pandemic, they know about the virus, yet they don't have the genuine human care enough to know that there's people on the other corner of the world who are going through difficulties. So I feel like TCKs have it the worst when things like that happen, because I definitely did. It was very difficult for me to be stuck in that middle zone where I don't feel accepted in any community because they were all closing off and making racist comments, making xenophobic comments, when I was supposed to be belonging everywhere at the same time, and I felt not belonging anywhere. So I feel like that TCKs definitely have the responsibility and they have the power to kind of be the connecting bridge between these closed off spaces, because we have the sympathy and we have the capability of caring for people just then the community around us. So we have a very important responsibility um, one of the interviewees from my book, um, Qatar, she said the words, we're kind of like the global prototypes of the human race because the world is increasingly growing smaller and smaller, yet people don't know how to deal with people who are different from them. So we're kind of like the model, we're the global prototypes of how people should act in the globalizing world we are in today. So that would be our role to help people connect more and sympathize more in our current day and age even though things suck right now. <laughs> a 21 year old can say that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> For those of you who still want to worry about going to a frat party, I've never done that my entire life. I'm sorry, I've worked <laughs> since I was 17 years old. So to me, this kind of thing was already an incredible issue to deal with. And yet, if your concern is on going to something that is just it's you could experience at a later part of your life you really need to assess your own priority as a human it's because mm -hmm. uh, such kind of blasphemous sentence is unacceptable and i really think if, if anyone as that as what you said has encountered such a thing you really need to assess your priority mm. So yeah, uh, so back to G1 again. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, I, I've asked quite a little bit on your own personal experience on that. And yeah, so I would like to, we are definitely gonna talk about why you, why I invited you to the show, of course, and that is your book. 
the third culture thing uh apologies i the title was quite long so <laughs> i paraphrase it a bit so yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah thank you uh yeah <laughs> so i fr i've read the snippets of it and i will definitely continue reading it again but for now i will just pass you back the platform to actually explain a little bit more on your book uh what do you hope it accomplished and also what is your experience growing up because uh, as I think one of your interviewees, our the creator of our Bible itself, uh, Dr. Ruth mm -hmm. Van Pickett. So, yes. yeah, of course, that is from Dr. Ruth's perspective. Now, for your case, is that you are a teenager and now you are giving your own point of view from mm -hmm. this particular book that is based on your own experience. And well, uh, I would like to pass you back the mic so that please tell us a little bit more about this book of yours and. What do you hope to for it to accomplish? I'd love to. Um, the, the full title is very long. <laughs> is the third culture teen colon in between cultures in between life stages, and it's a book that specifically discusses. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, now you know why I didn't mention the whole thing. It's very not long. I'm disrespectful Super to the long. book or the author, <laughs> but it is really long. Okay. Uh, yeah. I should have yeah. <laughs> Um. And where was I? Oh, and it's a book that specifically discusses teenage third culture kids. And as the subtitle says, in between cultures, in between life stages, I feel like teenage TCKs really deserve their own stories because they're such in a tight spot that nobody really is able to understand because they're in between going through childhood and adulthood. But at the same time, they're so in between all the cultures they've interacted with so oftentimes they feel like they really don't stand anywhere and they really can't be understood by anyone. And I was inspired to write this book because I was struggling as a third culture teen. Um, I feel like it's the most difficult time for a TCK, for normal human beings to be a teen. But as a TCK, it's even harder. So I really felt like it deserved its own story. It deserved its own book. And when I was um, talking to Dr. Ruth Van Rieken, actually, she she said that the TCK writings and the stories are kind of like a Christmas tree and she kind of built the foundation of it and other people should be hanging like their little ornaments of their own little stories onto the tree. So this is my ornament. This is my dedication to the third culture kid story. Um, it was actually interesting because I feel like writing the book was very much of a therapeutic process for me. Um, I earned so much from just talking to different TCKs and getting to know their stories. And I feel like all the interviews that I did was more like a personal therapy session where I kind of got to reevaluate all the burdens and the baggages that was within me and the cultural conflicts I never resolved. So finishing that book literally and figuratively was kind of like growing out of my teenage years because I, seriously literally finished the manuscript on the birthday of my 21st birthday so i feel like the journey as a whole was very meaningful to me and i felt accepted and understood and seen by other people for the first time because before talking to other tck's for to write that book i always felt like all the conflicts and cultural issues that i had within myself i felt very insecure about them and i felt like all those conflicts were invalid. I could never talk to somebody else about like, oh, how I feel Korean, but I'm not like I'm living here, but I don't feel like I live here. Like those are all issues that I felt like couldn't be talked about at that point. But after opening up about him, I felt so liberated and I felt like I really matured as a person. So I'm just hoping that the book does half of the effect that other TCKs that I've interviewed had on me. So I really hope the book can help more TCKs, TCTs as I call them, third culture teens, feel more understood and know that they're not alone in their struggles. So yeah, that, that's the book. It's on Amazon. It's only 99 cents US dollars just for its first 30 days. It's so cheap. You can barely buy it out of your pocket. And I hope you guys all read it and leave a review for me. Yeah, uh, first off, let me just uh, say that it is what you experienced through is validated. I actually went through that also when I was 17 years old, I think, mm. at that time. Yeah, uh, at that time, especially, is that my I was living with my relative who are expats. So as a result, uh, 
they it was their first time being an expat so to them is they still cling on to what they know growing up mm -hmm. whereas for me i heard by then it was already my fifth or eighth year my fifth or sixth years or so being a third culture kid so to me i'm so used to the mindset of growing up in this particular country that is outside of my birth country that i just couldn't understand why are they so insistent on how they work whereas mm -hmm what I work or how I would have done it would have actually been much more efficient. So that was an, in, that was an incredibly difficult year. And yeah, it, I went through my own phase at that time, uh, my own phase of depression at that time. And mm. it was not an, ex an easy experience. And yeah, first off, just let me highlight to you, it is validated, even though now maybe you, you're already writing a book on it but the thing is is that uh some of that baggage actually still is still there and mm -hmm. well just to let you know it it has no problem with it okay <laughs> thank you you're welcome okay so now this is actually going to be my favorite question so far and i think this is something that already is you're already doing this anyway so yeah, if you have a chance to create a character or a series to address TCK uh, or even social issues, uh, what would it be? Because you are already a movie maker now anyway. So yeah, maybe you can dive on that. I don't know if I can think of a specific character or story like on the spot, but I feel like movies and shows that I could reference to kind of make more like it is the movie Babel, which kind of talks about, it's like the butterfly effect of how people and families in different corners of the world are somehow all connected because of what they do. It's like the small thing they do that affects someone who's in a completely different continent. And that was a very mind blowing movie for me because I feel like that strange connection between these random people across the world is kind of what symbolizes the third culture kid experience. Even though it's not, uh, even though even though even though it's not specifically a third culture kid story, um, I feel like that connection, that that connecting bridge between different communities around the world, that's the kind of stories that need to be told in order for TCKs to feel more welcome and understood in this world. Um, a similar show on Netflix, I think is Sense8. It also, it's like a sci-fi show about how like different people who have never known each other and live in completely different countries are actually have connected bodies and they have like one spirit. Um, it's very whack, but <laughs> I really like the idea of how people who are living in different countries and different cultures can connect to, with each other on a whole different level. So that will kind of be like the stories I wanna tell. I wanna tell ensemble stories of people from different cultures and different corners of the world just getting along with each other. Cause I feel like that idea of different people like able to be friends and able to connect with each other on a personal level, that's kind of what TCKs live through every day. So. I would definitely want to tell like specific TCK stories. I know um, Finding Home, like Going Back Home, I forgot the title, but the short film about TCK experience in India, I think that was a very powerful movie. So I would definitely want to tell specific TCK personal stories, but at the same time, I think my bigger fundamental goal is to tell stories where people around the world feels more connected and loved, because that is definitely what is needed more of today. Yeah, I've actually had uh, I've actually had Tony Pietra Arjuna on my show before. Oh. Uh, he is a filmmaker in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> his reason his recent movie is Shadow Play mm. is actually based on his own identity as a TCK. It is to find identity. So uh, that is from at that time when I actually interviewed him. That is the theme of his movies moving forward because mm -hmm. as well, I'm not a cinematographer, yeah? I'm a podcaster. So, however, from what I know is that for, cine for movie directors, filmmakers, they usually have a certain recurring theme in each of the movie. Like, for mm -hmm. example, for George Lucas, I know he likes to implement the relationship between a father and a son, as seen from mm -hmm. Star Wars. And I think for Spielberg, his style is that he wants to enhance the mind by 
weaving a weaving a portrayal of something beyond the ordinary. So for your case, though, uh, with your upcoming growing career as a filmmaker and as an author, is it what will your theme be moving forward to? Hmm. Maybe this sounds a bit repetitive, but I would say my theme would be connection, that an unexpected connections, not just connections that's obvious, like because you live your neighbors, because you are from the same country, something like that. But an unexpected connections of different communities of people. Because when you open up that opportunity and that possibility of these different connections, that's when people, I feel like, could open up to understanding and loving each other, even though they're from completely different backgrounds and completely different parts of the world. And I feel like that's kind of my responsibility as a TCK to kind of bring more love to this world and connect different corners of the world. So I don't know, I guess that's my theme, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how my first film goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, uh, this is going to be my, my, two of my final questions, yeah? So first off is this. Uh, you have recently repatriated back to South Korea and well, when this pandemic ends and you are allowed for international travel, you are definitely going back to, you are definitely need to return to Los Angeles because you need to finish school, right? Yep. So <clears throat> this is something that I actually learned from my uncle at that time when I was in South Korea is that there needs to be, the thing is with South Korea is that it is stuck in between cultures now, even though they are one of the leading countries in Southeast Asia, especially in terms of technology. At the same time, there, need, there has always been a strong insistence and adherence to cultures and respect, which of course is good. But the thing is, at the same time, it actually hampers the progress, the progressive mindset. It's because when you are when you need to be more innovative you need to be more dynamic and yet you have to follow a certain culture on a certain way of doing it it kind of hampers the progress so for your case though uh, how do you feel your experience as a tck could benefit uh, your own your own bird country or if you prefer to let's say maybe you want to discuss on Qingdao too uh yeah i'll leave it to you mm. I have definitely struggled with the role I should play as kind of like the Americanized expat Korean in Korea, because Korea is definitely, as you've mentioned, going through changes. And I still don't really have the answers to all the conflict that arise because they're starting to open up to more cultures and more corners of the world. Um, I know recently there was, for instance, there was the issue of blackface. Um, some high school kids in Korea dressed up as like they col colored themselves and dressed up as, um, if you've seen like the, the I think they're from Ghana, like it was like the African funeral service and they like dance with like weird dubstep music. Anyways, there was a meme like that and they wanted to dress up was like- it on TikTok? Okay. I, I don't it's on know, TikTok. it was probably, I I've seen a compilation on YouTube and it was like a big meme in Korea. So the high school kids for their graduation picture thought it would be funny if they dress up like that. But um, this black, um, celebrity, he posted about that on Instagram about how offensive it was to see high school kids um, do blackface. And I felt very conflicted because I always have that guilt of because I'm the Americanized kid, like I don't really have the right to kind of tell people what they should be doing. Because even though I feel like I have my own values, imposing it in on Korea, imposing my Western values on Korea also kind of feels like continuing this kind of, not imperialist per se, but like imposing a Western mindset on an Eastern country that has a completely different set of cultures and different set of values. So it's not, even though if it was in America, it would have been so, so easy for me to say, oh yeah, blackface is totally wrong. Like nobody should ever do it. But now that you're in Korea, where people have completely different history, they don't really carry the burden of racism that happened in America. Like how much responsibility and how much like of a sin is it to kind of do that here? I feel like it's a question that we all struggle with, especially as Asian TCKs, since we were so exposed to Western culture and Western experiences, yet it's so hard to cut the line between 
like this is actually the right thing or is it actually the western right thing so that's kind of the question i struggle with a lot but i realized that kind of the solution to that is not to be the mean like imposing person to say like yeah like blackface is wrong like you should understand and sympathize for american culture i feel like it needs to be more of a softer loving kind of helping people see different perspectives helping people open up to different cultures and educating them on different histories and different value systems out there and that is the role tck should play they should never be the imposing mean person who sets the rule for the country they live in but more of the connecting bridge the more of the way in between different cultures and different countries so i want to be that loving kind of a doorway for people to understand and open up to each other um it's such an abstract general concept but i feel like it has to be because i don't know i i, I that would be that would be my answer i don't have a specific like one two three you should do this but that's kind of like the general mindset of how i live life and how, how I wish TCKs would live life as well. So yeah, that would be my answer. Yeah, don't worry, it's a good answer. Yeah, so in, in a recent podcast appearance whereby I was invited as a guest, I actually need to call out on how, the portrayal of Asian in mm. the media. Mm. So for one thing, I don't like it is when people tell me, oh, representation is done, it's just by slotting in an Asian guy. And then afterwards, of course, there's also the typical stereotype whereby the Asian women are dressed in a skimpy attire just as mm. the love interest of a white guy. And well, uh, the Asian guy, as you, we mentioned earlier on stereotype, we are either nerds or somehow we all are no Kung Fu. No, we don't. We don't do that. The girls uh, with dyed hair, like strips yeah. of dyed pink hair, <laughs> yeah. like the Asian thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually, regarding that, I didn't mention it because I remember a friend of mine who is in Houston actually did that when she was younger. So I'm like, okay, I really cannot say no. But okay, oh my gosh. But yeah, I think it has to be the what you said actually makes sense is because there needs just to be a lot more education and awareness of different culture and a different upbringing. For one thing is that why don't I see Asian stereotype of being creative? I mean, uh, Justin Lin, James Wan, they are big time cinema, they are big time movie directors down there. Yeah. And yet, how come there's no stereotype on that? That is, some, that is a thing that would be appreciated to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And this actually is also related to the last question I will ask you, because the thing is, is that for your case now, you even though you are still a student, you have participated in a lot of short films. You definitely aspire to be a filmmaker, and you are now also a technic, You are also a published author. The the areas which based on creativity, and yet within an Asian culture itself, this has always been considered a taboo. Is that mm. unless oh you are a doctor, you are unless you are a doctor, lawyer, or maybe to an extent an engineer you are considered the black sheep of the family of sorts. Mm -hmm. So for your case though, how do you feel that in the media or even maybe in any kind of, writ uh, of, written, of a written media, how do you feel that this kind of image or stereotyping could be, could be combated? I guess if you mm -hmm. want to say that. And also for, yeah. And also what do you hope moving forward, uh, how uh, DCK awareness could help for your generation because 21, at 21 years of age, you are incredibly young. I guess mm -hmm. you are post, you are post millennial already, right? Okay, I'm old. I guess I sort of am. Yeah. I'm like yeah. right 1999. <laughs> By the way, every single one who actually live a life here are either in the millennial or pre-millennial generation. So be careful. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful of the old people. <laughs> I'm one of them, by the way. I'm 27. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Well, the portrayal of okay media. Um, <laughs> I feel like we talk about this a lot because I was part of the e-board for the Asian Pacific Cinema Association on campus. 
So we talk a lot about Asian representation, especially in the film industry. And I feel like the answer always boils down to more Asians should be able to tell their own stories. Because if they don't tell their own stories, it's just always going to go wrong. Like no matter how hard someone else from another community tries to portray them, it's never going to be that authentic, real experience from someone who's Asian. So there needs to be systematic change, especially in the United States, since so many of the white male community owns the executive spots in studios or important positions, even beyond the film industry, just media in general is owned a lot by one certain group of people. So I feel like in order for changes to happen, people need to ask for it or else the executives would never change their mind. And after that, there would be systematic change. The Asians um, or women or anyone who's underrepresented in media would be able to step up in their position and actually have the power to tell their own stories. And I think that's the only way stereotypes or bad portrayals of like the nerdy Asian kid can go away. Because we Asians know that that's not how all of us are, even though we had like the dyed hair in Houston. <laughs> like not everyone, not everyone is, you know. So I think that would be my answer to that question. Um, what was the second part of the question? Can you remind me? Uh, yeah. So along with that, though, what do you hope that more TCK awareness okay. on the cause itself, like what I'm doing now at the moment, perhaps? Uh, mm -hmm. How do you feel that this would help your generation moving forward? How do you feel that we can help to enforce what you guys are doing so that it's a lot easier for your generation or even those after you moving forward? Mm, I feel like it's kind of like the same answer, but I feel like more stories need to be told and more experiences need to be normalized. Because if the TCK story, which I, I always felt like the TCK story is never told enough, like especially in America, the immigrant stories or that, that kind of, that's kind of having the boom right now. Like I feel like there's more immigrant stories, there's more minority stories being told. There needs to be a global movement of something similar, whether it be film, whether it be through podcasts or shows or books, there needs to be more stories of TCKs out there or else people will never know that we exist. People will never know that there are certain groups of people who have experiences where they are stuck in between cultures and they don't necessarily belong to a single culture. Um, I, I remember when I posted about my book on Facebook, a lot of people commented like, oh, I've never known the term third culture before, but this explains so much of the questions and mysteries I've had throughout my life. And I think um, that's kind of the role that TCKs of this generation should be playing because we now have the power and the foundation to tell our own stories. We we already have the established, we have the Bible from Ruth Van Rieke, we have other books about TCKs. We have so much to base it off of. Now we need to use that as a stepping ground to tell our stories and make our stories more known. So my hope is that in the future, there's a point where you can say I'm from somewhere and then there's no other questions asked. Like the other person doesn't ask, oh, like, but how do you look like that? How do you speak like that? No, if you're from somewhere, that's just who you are. So that would be my hope for this generation. All right. Okay. Uh, just to further clarify on what you want said, uh, yeah, third culture kids does not mean we come from a third world country. I don't know why <laughs> there's still some confusion on that. But no. Or we lived in three countries. A lot of people say that. Uh, like, oh, so you uh, lived in three countries? <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe if I can end this with my own definition of a third culture kid is because I grew up in two countries and I've never felt that I belong in both of them. I have a lot of love for them, but it's just not, I've just never felt home there. Uh, so I look for a third one and another one is that I see the world from a third person point of view because mm -hmm. due to the exposure of the different kind of mindsets and culture, it kind of form an entirely different mindset of my own. So mm -hmm. when I see a certain issue, I do not see this as A specifically need to be A. I see this as maybe a B or a C or a D. So as a result, it kind of create a different kind of dynamics. And this is something that need to be encouraged globally because the world is becoming smaller. You cannot enforce one mindset, one culture, one custom. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So other than that, that is actually my final question. Yeah. Uh, so do you want anything you want to mention? Um, I guess 
promoting my book. Please, people, go out there and buy the third culture tea. It's on Amazon, on literally every Amazon that's available in the world. It only costs 99 cents for Kindle. You can also order a paperback. And please leave a review if you liked it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Other than that, I actually just need to leave a like for these individuals who leave a like. And first off is Lara. Uh, I know her comment, her uh, likes, uh, like cannot appear here because she used the heart emoji thing. So I don't know why it doesn't appear here, but it's fine. I, at least uh, we know her. So there's Miss Dorothy Ozan, one of my past guests. Link, thank you so much. Uh, there's also Janice Saribai Vino, uh, one of my one of my old acquaintances actually i'm quite surprised since i haven't seen her for a while uh yeah so there's also christina uh ben uh my good buddy who has been really supportive of this show he also has his own show called bender.org uh there's also miss jen mohindra who is actually a tck psychologist and also a podcaster and of course uh kritika who is actually now in new york city so other than that, uh, thank you so much, Yuan, for coming to the show. And I really hope that thank I'm definitely going to read your book. Uh, yeah, just to let you guys know, mm -hmm. she sent me the manuscript, so I don't really have to buy it. <laughs> just kidding, just don't kidding. say that to everyone. <laughs> well, for me, I need to have it because I need to review that. Okay, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, guys, please. Uh, please support her on all the all of the all of the all of the pages whereby you can actually get an ebooks. Uh, it's already in the description box, so do check it out. And I just read the first part of it, and it's amazing. So I really hope that this is something that will be beneficial for for third culture teens and. Other than that, please stay safe, take care of your own health, wash your hands, put on your mask. It's not, this is, we still don't know how long this will be going, even though the world is opening up already. But please take care of yourself, take care of your health. And yeah, uh, do enjoy the rest of your day. Or if you're watching this at night time, have a good rest. So with that, that's the end of Global Citizens, episode 61, conversation with Lee Ji Won, author of Third Culture Team. So with that, have a good day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone.